Welcome back to Jablar. We have Clue Rivals Edition. Two player version of Clue. Rivals Edition. Hasbro Gaming. Ages 8 and up. For two player Clue instead of three or more. For regular Clue is a three or more player game. We were able to make a two player version. And I think the card game has a two player version as well. So you get six, you get 19 Clue cards, two plastic pawns, six carriage tokens. Six weapon tokens, evidence folder, one dice, and instructions. So, I like the art here. It's the art they use on the card game as well, and the most, the more modern, regular Clue game. I think Dr. Orchid is the additional character, the added. And then you have all the classics. Um, Professor Plum. Uh, forgot his name. Speacock, Scarlet, Colonel Mustard. But we're going to go through the cards anyway. And look at each person. Uh, here's the board. It's just a four square fold out board. You got your dice. The weapons are nice. They're actually metal. So that's that's pretty cool. So they have some, a little bit of weight to them. So the wrench. All your classic stuff here. Candlestick. Revolver. And here are your cards, your evidence folder. Uh, these tokens you'll punch out and you'll put randomly on the board before each game. Spaces are already on the board. Desk, piano, it's gonna match this section of cards. And then you have two player pawns, or just kind of generic player pawns. But they're classic looking, like a, kind of like a sorry board game really. So these are kind of off theme to me, being so, <laughs> so bright and old school looking i think they could have done something a little bit better with these pawns but it's ten dollar game so it's not like super expensive brand new at least that's the dollar general looks like where i got it from um so you take these cards and we'll look at them really quick that's a picture of the room because in this one the area will be like chessboard piano sofa coffee table writing desk lounge chair fireplace those are all on the board Pretty easy to see. And the characters are suspects. The Scarlet, Speacock, Dr. Orchid, Mr. Green, what's his name? Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum. And your weapons cards. And all the art on here is good, I think. It's nice and bright, it's easy to see. So you're gonna shuffle each of these decks up so you don't know what's what. They're going to be separate at the beginning of the game. And you're going to take one from each pile, put it in your evidence folder. So one from here, one from here. So we have the who, the where, and what they used. Goes in here. Make sure nobody can see what goes in the uh, evidence folder here. Put that side. Then you're going to take all these cards, put them together, shuffle them up. Then each player is going to get eight cards, which is the remaining cards of the deck. So that's their hand. This is our hand here. So this tells us what is not involved in the whodunit. So we know the stuff is not in the evidence folder. So this will be our hand. Leave it face up. Now you randomly put all this stuff out how you want it. Weapons could go anywhere. Each game could be different. Uh, same thing with the tokens. You can put the suspects. It'll say suspect. You put their token on the suspect areas and weapons on the weapon areas. And like I said, it can be randomized each time. Instructions are nice and short. So we went over how to get ready with the three piles and put an image of the evidence. You have your board here that says the youngest player goes first. 
On your turn, you're going to roll the dice and move your pawn off the start position up to the number of spaces shown. If you land on the evidence space, you must make a, a suggestion. So, so if you're like here, or it's better to see like here, there's nothing, there's evidence, no weapon, there's no person, and it's not on a coffee table. So, it's saying evidence space, which is all these cards. So we'll say the coffee table, we'll land on that. Okay, suggestion is not a full accusation, but it helps you narrow down the possibilities. Your suggestion must specify two of the three ca categories, evidence, suspect, weapon, or room location. So it must include the evidence on the space you landed on. For example, okay, we'll do their example. Um, Colonel Mustard's here. This token's here. So we'll say we landed on Colonel Mustard there. Okay, you could say Colonel Mustard with the candlestick. So, or you could say Colonel Mustard um, by the coffee table. So, but you want to look at your hand. So if we have Colonel Mustard, We could not say it because we know they don't have it. We also know it's not in here. But I guess some strategy is to pick like something else that you don't have. So we could say Colonel Mustard. And we could say, since we have the rope and the revolver, we could say with the, um, the wrench. We'll say Colonel Mustard with the wrench. Let's explain the rest here. I'll leave it here. So hopefully you guys can read it. Okay, so if your opponent has evidence relating to your suggestion, you must show one piece of the evidence and place it face up on the table. That card must stay on the table for the rest of the game. So you make your accusation or suggestion. So we set the wrench. You don't have the wrench. They have lead pipe. So say we said Colonel Mustard with lead pipe. They don't have Colonel Mustard because we know that, but they will have to show one of them. So they have to show the lead pipe. So this goes face up, so everyone knows the lead pipe is shown. It's not going to be in here. If your opponent does not have any evidence, they are not required to place anything on the table. So you could just you could just miss, and they wouldn't show anything. When you think you know who committed the murder, with which weapon, and where, move to the body outline space, which is here. So you would move your character here to one of these like four spaces. The spaces are kind of hard to see. They're small squares. So that that's kind of a mess a little bit. Just because the art can get in the way a little bit, I think. It's not too bad though. So the squares are about the token size. So you could go here. Or in the middle there. Okay, you make your three accusations. Player will then look at the cards that were placed in the beginning of the game into the folder. So say we say, so we know the lead pipe's not there. We know Colonel Mustard's in our hand and these weapons here. So we know it's not going to be these, and it's not going to be these folks, and it's not going to be any of these places. So we could say, we think it's Mr. Green. Um, with the not with the dagger, and we could say, uh, so we got coffee table, fireplace, sofa, and we could say at the desk, which is up here. So that would be our accusation, Mr. Green, with the wrench, at the desk. And we after we make our accusation, we look in here. We don't show it to the other person. So this is where the game ends, no matter what. So we did not get it right. So Miss Scarlet with a wrench at the chessboard. Now, depending on how far you've gotten, how many evidences are out, it makes it easier, of course. But now the opponent gets to guess, right? Because you already know. So the game kind of can't really can't kind of continue any further. So. If you are correct, you win. If you are incorrect, your opponent gets a chance to guess before looking. If both players are incorrect, everyone lo both lose. So you all lose. 
So it says try to confuse your opponent by asking them about evidence that's in your hand. Like I said, I asked about Colonel Mustard because I knew I had him. Uh, you cannot move diagonally, so you can't go diagonally. Uh, you can't move through the same square, so you can't move this way, like through a person. And I think that's it. Or land unoccupied, so you can't share a space either. So you can't move through, and you can't go diagonal. So you have to go in angles, just like, you know, right angles, like around things. So it's interesting how they made it a two-player game. I mean, the only kind of thing that would kind of be not cool is someone just rushes to end the game and this is going to random guess every time to like kind of ruin the experience. So if you're both, both into the experience and want to really play the game how it should be played, I think it might be kind of fun. Um, but yeah, but you know, I guess somebody's going to be like, I'm just going to go here and guess and just mess up everything. <laughs> so play it the right way and I think it'll be a lot more fun. So then if you did guess the right ones, you would know it's a scarlet with a wrench over at the chessboard. I do like all the components. I like the art. I like the board. Um, I kind of like the two-player take on it. I haven't got to really play it, play it. I was just me going through the instructions and it's showing you hopefully how to play. Give some backstory to the characters here. We got Miss Scarlet, Femme Fatale, Beautiful, Seductive, Ruthless, Manipulative, Jeez, <laughs> Colonel Mustard, Alpha Male, Patriot, Philanthropist, Liar, Narcissist, Miss, Miss Peacock, Social Butterfly, uh, Stasis, Discreet, Greedy, Devious, uh, Mr. Green, Playboy, Charming, Witty, Unforgiving, Decadent, Dr. Orchid, Genius, Mysterious, Adventurous, Ambitious, Delinquent, Professor Plum, the Intellectual, Trepid, Eccentric, Obsessive, paranoid. So it looks like this game came out in 2020. That's when he made these series, I guess. Of all these Rivals editions. I you know they have uh, Rivals Life, and Rivals Clue. I mean, this is Rivals Clue. Rivals Life and Rivals Sorry, and a couple others. Maybe, maybe Monopoly. But I really wanted to like Clue more than I ever did because that three player thing and you know, writing with pen and, you know, pencil and paper and all that stuff. Um, it's kind of led to a downer of a game, or more of a boring game. This is streamlined, I think. And uh, I, I think it did a good job in streamlining for two-player, as long as you play it, I'd say, correctly. And not just end the game by rushing here. Components are nice. Board looks good. Um, some of the squares are hard to see in the carpeted area. That's about it, though. It's not too bad. And for 10 bucks, I think it's fine. I'd do need to like play it play it like with another person I think to give get the real feel of it but from what I've seen here I think it'd be okay so thanks for watching triple R have a good day or night wherever you are